this video, I am going to do a price rundown on what I've spent on my car so far, or how much I've spent on my car so far. I've had it for several years, and parts has been in and out of that car, and I've done a shit ton of maintenance on that car. I still need to do more, but I wanted to do a price rundown just to see where I'm at personally because I felt like I've spent too much on this car and it seems like a bottomless pit but before the sun goes away I I need to get my day started before I do that I've already compiled the list while well, I've been compiling I've had this list for a while just to keep myself updated on what parts I have but I was able to track down the prices for each of the parts that I got for the car and I'll go down them and show you what they are maybe potentially where I got them from if I still remember and the price for it and then at the end I will calculate everything up and see where I'm sitting at and maybe then that will decide whether I should continue I'm probably going to continue. It's a hobby. I mean, it's a hobby I do. But I get a lot of questions from other people. And they're all like, why would you pick this car? Why would you pick that car? And it was like, dude, it doesn't even matter what car I would have gotten. I would have spent the same amount of money on a Civic or 240 or MR2 or any of that good stuff. So the platform doesn't matter go to the gym before the sun goes away and maybe rinse the car for a little bit and wax it and clean it up. I'm probably not going to do all that. Okay, I'm back. I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. Actually, no, I'm not ready to do this. I need one more thing. One more thing. Okay, now I'm ready. Oh get that. You get ice cold beer every time if you leave your glass in the freezer. You don't need to put your beer in there or your water or your juices, but you should definitely put your glass in the freezer. Look at that. Oh yeah. I think I already know what this is. I'm pretty sure I know what this is. And I have to thank the post office for damaging it. Punk asses. Oh, it's not damaged. Okay. Got the uh, Ready Player One poster for free, of course, because we bought our tickets on Fandango and some movies they'll give you free posters. I got a lot of them. I mentioned in my previous videos, but I thought it was a cool throwback. Wait, no, to the uh, old school arcade era posters. So that's why I got it. Other than that, I didn't. The movie was okay. I mean, we only went to go see it for the cameos. They had like StarCraft and Overwatch and Ninja Turtles and a Gundam and Godzilla. It was cool. So the price rundown on what I've spent on my car so far. I'll go ahead and start with the exterior. The first mod I got was the tow hooks. Uh, they are. Purple anodized from Garage Star. I got it on a forum with a group buy for the front and rear. I think it was roughly around 80 bucks, something like that. I got it when I was in Texas. So it was a long time ago. It was when I first got the car. So 80 bucks. The next item on the list is my turn signals itself. I got this from a group buy also for 80 bucks. Um, it was a, a static nine version of the TSIs or the turn signal intakes. And they were making me out of parts and some other things, but they didn't last very long. I mean, you could look them up and Static 9 will still show up, but they're pretty much non-existent now. I enjoy them. I like them. They're functional. Next up is my uh, Mazda Speed stubby antenna. I got that on Amazon for $8, $10, whatever. You, I'll just put eight. Wasn't really important to me because I don't listen to the radio ever, so it's just there. I mean, I could take it out, put a plug, 
you know, save that extra pound because lightweight race car or whatever the hell these kids nowadays say. Anyway, moving on. Next on the list is uh, my front lip. It is the Garage Very front lip. I got this for $250. Also the Garage Star license plate relocator. I got that for 50 bucks. You go on their website, garagestar.com, and they have tons of great Miata stuff, man. I, I, everything there is awesome. Also from Garage Star, I got their Fender Flare bolt kit, which was $40. That was a fun time. My coworker Alex was no. You can follow him on his Instagram. I'll put a link in the description or just text over the video. I don't know, we'll figure it out. And then the Fender Flares itself, uh, these are real auto connection version ones. They're not some eBay knockoffs. I got this for $250 when it came back in stock a couple months ago, I don't know. And then I have my KG Works spoiler. They are the R-Speed Reman version. I got that for 160 bucks. It's not a fast car, so I don't need a big GT3 wing or some shit like that. My mirrors. I have the APR GT3 carbon fiber mirrors with the slick auto adapters. That came out to $380. Um, I did have to replace the glass once because I shut the door too hard and the glass fell out. But a replacement is only like $10 or $20 or something like that. And then I have my eBay side skirt for $110 is what I got it for. And you, you could already tell it's eBay because they're warping. I mean, I think it warped on the second day. Ooh, I don't have that much battery life. I better switch, huh? Shit. Oh. All right, let's switch batteries. Okay, okay, okay. New batteries in. Next on the list that I have is the interior. I'm not gonna really count the door cards because I don't remember how much I got the cards for. I did go to Home Depot and it is custom made by me. Um, the wrap, I think I got what was like 40 bucks or something like that. And the door strap was just a Stance Nation lanyard that I folded up and shortened to create a door pull. I thought it was cool at the time. I might not count all the OEM stuff I replaced and got. I might, I don't know, we'll see. So the first thing that I got was the carbing shift knob. Uh, I think I got that from Rev9. I may be wrong. Rev9 or um, Rev9. <laughs> got that for 42 bucks uh, it's awesome I love it. it has a lot of grip and then I got the grip royal shift boot which was 35 bucks that was recent the grip royal royal grain steering wheel I know in my first video I listed it as a royal woody but I was completely wrong it is royal grain I got that for 180 bucks took me a while to get it because it didn't have it in stock and then I had to find it off of eBay some guy had it and I snatched it right up. NRG 10th anniversary quick release for 80 bucks and the NRG hub adapter for 80 bucks. I did also get a new dash. I went to the junkyard and found a 1.6 Miata with this dash and it was in great condition. So I went ahead and took that and swapped it in. I got that one for 70 bucks. Then I got my Broadway mirror, which was 10 bucks. And the Balma sticker was 10 bucks, so a total of 20 bucks. It is a 270 mil rear view mirror. And then behind the mirror, I have Blackview DR650 one channel because I don't have a hard top and I can't get a two channel to put the second camera in the back. I just got a one channel. With the uh, Blackmagic Pro battery thingy, that was for $240. Next, I have the Garage Star Doe and Door Pushing. I got that for 45. My Pro Sport gauges. I have the water, oil temp, oil pressure, and a boost gauge. Boost gauge for the future, but you can still use it as a vacuum because it does essentially the same thing. Uh, so the water was 55. The oil temp was 50 the oil pressure was 57 and the boost gauge was 60 bucks crazy i know yeah oh that was the price at the time they're probably cheaper now 
And then my AFR gauge, I do have the Innovate MTL X. I got that for $219. And inside, I do have the TN controller for my EDFC2. Uh, that was $156. Settings, I'm still trying to play with. I have the Mitsubishi Moto Clear Dome Lens. Uh, the one with the car was horrible, it was hazy. And I found a smoke one, but then you couldn't see anything, so I got this mission. So I got this mission. This Mitsubishi Motors clear one, which works a lot better with the uh, eBay LED, which is sketchy because it's never solid. Got that for 14 bucks. As far as my gauges, I did get the Rev Limiter Warbird gauges. Yeah, I got it on his Thanksgiving sale for $99. His retro hazard and light switch that was for 79 bucks. Man, that's just what the hell? 1600 and it's okay, whatever. That's just unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Wow, I was expecting, I don't know, four, five, six hundred. Okay, moving on, <laughs> moving on. What the hell? Man, what the hell? Okay, next up is my engine. I try to stray away from this as much as possible because every mod is, every performance mod in the engine is very minimal gains without a turbo. So there was no point. So I never really invested my time and money into the engine just yet. Cause I didn't know if whether I was gonna keep the car or sell it. And so far with the interior and the exterior, those I could just easily take off and throw it on another one. So I, yeah, anyway, the engine, uh, I'm not going to include any maintenance stuff that I've done, any OEM stuff that I've done because that goes for every car. But, uh, starting off, I have the Mishimoto radiator that was 240 bucks. Uh, the dual fans and the shroud for the radiator was 265 bucks. The Mishimoto silicone radiator and heater hoses, which was 155 for the radiator hoses, which is the upper and lower, and then 130 for the heater hoses. Then I got a Mishimoto oil filter sandwich plate for 70 bucks. That's what I hook my sensors up to. I got a D1 spec 1.3 bar radiator cap, 20 bucks. Um, I think they're an eBay brand, I, I don't know. An ISR or ISIS Racing Performance in a Circuit Spec Exhaust. I got this for $365. There was a wait time for this as well. Um, some accessories, I do have the Garage Star Cooling Panel. I got that for 50 bucks. Uh, used the Garage Star Sandwich Plate, 55 bucks. Defective Garage Star Wiper Cowl, I got it in black. I didn't see anything wrong with it at all. Don't know why they call it defective, but I got that for 60 bucks. I also have a Dietchworks DW200 fuel pump. I got that for 99. And then um, Bell Engineering IAT adapter. I don't know how much I got that for. Actually, let me look it up. Okay, I got that for 35 bucks. I should put that down. And then as far as engine management, I do have a Mega Squirt Gen 2 plug and play. Bought that used for 700. So let's go ahead and tally this up, man. I'm, I'm scared. $2,284 is what I've spent on my engine so far with no performance, no horsepower whatsoever. <laughs> Wait, no, I have to add $10 for that cheap ass eBay filter. So that's $2,294 on my engine. Oh my God. This is starting to hurt my feelings.
Anyway, next up I have the drive train. Not really much done, but I do have the Flying Miata uh, 10 pound flywheel. I got that for $319 off their site. And as well as a Flying Miata level one clutch for $369 off of their site. I did have their clutch override, but I wired that up to a switch instead. So I'm not gonna add that in. And the switch is only like five bucks, so I'm not gonna add that in either. I have a Ralco RZ short throw kit in there. Other than a rebuild and all that, um, the short throw is great. It's definitely better than the stock one. Miata Roadster Delrin shifter tip bushing. That was for 15 bucks. I got it off of the official site. But then I have an XCD master and slave cylinder, both for 34 bucks. And extended um, stainless steel clutch line that was for $24 and everything works just as great the extended line gets rid of the coil and it gives less failure points and that's it yeah okay LSD is like 1600 so I'm waiting for that $831. Oh my god, that's the cheapest I've spent so far. That doesn't include installation on the clutch and flywheel, which was 300 bucks. That is great. I feel like I saved money. I feel like, cheers, man. Cheers. Next category uh, is chassis and suspension. I'm not going to count the roll bar. Oh, fuck. I'm not going to count the style bar that I got because that came with the car. So as far as bracing goes... I only have one thing which is a brake brace from Garage Star. You get that off their official site. And that was for 85 bucks. It does help with the pedal pressure. And then I have uh, a TN Flex Z 16 way adjustable coilover. I got that for 800 bucks. I did have some race lens, which I got for, I don't know, maybe 300 bucks. But I had to use a stock top hat. And I got rid of the stock top hat and got I forgot what I got but I got some new ones and they were extended top hats and I just wore out so I did get the motor kit for the TNs so I could run uh, the EDFC that was $166 and that's it no strut bar because I have the brake brace uh, no rear strut bar because no point since I already have that style bar those are only three things that I got for the chassis and the suspension. So let's go ahead and tally that up. $1,051. Not bad. Not bad. Most of it is from the coilover, but whatever. Break some hearts and finish this. I can't finish this because I only have one left and I can't drive. Probably just walk. Should hit up my homie and see if he's available. Anyway, moving on. Uh, the car was running on some rotas when I first, not when I first got it, but as soon as I got some money, I bought some wheels and tires. And they were the Rota Shakodans. I don't know if that's how you say it, but I got those in 15 by 9 with a zero offset. Some Federals, uh, 195, 45-15s. I think by now you already know what I got. But those wheels and tires, I don't remember how much I spent on them. Maybe 700 on the wheels and maybe less than two. I'm going to say 150, 160 on tires, all four. And the only reason why I got them was to check fitment to see if I could run something wider or smaller or lower offset and figure out tire stretch and stuff like that so I'm glad they were good I do have the work wheels uh, aluminum lug nuts I did get these for free they do cost about $200 and I can't believe my brother-in-law just gave it up to me but thank you for that I appreciate you so much for giving me $200 lug nuts <laughs> the brake setup that I got uh, I did get it off of Flying Miata. They are the four piston Dynalite calipers in red. 
So the total came out to be $629 for the red calipers and the BP-20X pads with the uh, stainless steel brake lines. Man, they, those things stop the car, like, they stop. It's not really meant for stopping distance, but more for pedal pressure. Next up, I have my wheels. These wheels are beautiful. They are the Workmeister's CR01s. I have them at 15 by 10 plus seven in old disc. I say it again, in old disc because they do have a disc and a disc was meant for the big brake setup, but I got them in old disc because I want maximum lip and that's what I got. So I have to run a spacer for it to clear the calipers. Um, I run a 5mm spacer on it and it works just fine. They're very close, but they clear. I got this from RavSpec. These were $1,850. Brand new. So you have to have, you have to consider the five month wait for the building period and the shipping from Cali. But I was so happy when I got these. I used them as a coffee table for a while until I could afford tires which was the Federal 595 RSR and they are grippy as shit. Um, they work. A couple of my friends been in my car when I was turning at high rate of speed and they are grippy. It threw them around because I don't have bucket seats but I got the tires for $336 for all four. I got them mounted at um, powder works, powder coating works. I don't know. I'll, I'll go through my Instagram and see what it is. But I got it mounted for 25 bucks each tire or each wheel or whatever. And they said they was going to put a video up of my wheel uh, being mounted because it's for their ad for the shop. So let's go ahead and add this up. So I have the aluminum lug nuts, which were free. So don't worry about that. That came out to $2,815, so $2,815 for my brakes, wheels, and tires. I think that's the most expensive so far. Yep, it is. It's the most expensive so far because of the wheels, for sure. Okay, last category, which is lighting and accessories. And I'm not going to even count that. That's just dumb. So that's pretty much sums up what I've spent on the car. Not really, sort of, kind of, more or less. Now let's go ahead and tally this up. I, I, I'm scared. It's definitely gonna be more than what I bought the car for, but I'm willing to find out just as much as you because this is the first time that I've done this. So for the exterior, it came out to 1435. For the interior, I got 1631. For the engine, I got 22. 94 for the drivetrain I got 831 brakes wheels and tires is 2815 chassis and suspension which is 1051 ten thousand dollars and fifty seven so I have spent ten thousand dollars on this car and it's still slow as shit oh my god <laughs> oh my god Man, that's cool though. Plus the car, I don't know how much I got the car for. 4500 5000 I got it when I was in Texas, so I didn't really care because I got a car. Wow, I spent $10,000 on this car. This is not your basic budget build at all. But then again, I spent $10,000 over the course of six years. So if you divide that, I don't know, how much would you get? divided by six so I spent about 1500 every year which is not that bad considering you know price parts parts price what okay considering the price of parts nowadays 1500 1600 it's pretty good okay I could live with that that I can accept I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video I need to go get another beer and reflect on what I just did. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, 
like comment subscribe all that good stuff what why am i saying that no okay i need to get a beer i need to take a shower because i did just get from the gym i did just get back from the gym so uh until next time